Did you know that your voice is as unique as a fingerprint? Yes, that means that nobody can say it like you, do it like you, or have your tone of voice. And this isn't just for public speakers or for those who might be singers or who use your voice often. This is for any and everybody. This is for the teacher. This is for the parent. This is for the person who makes money by using their voice. today's episode, I am bringing you Shulanda Gibson, who is a licensed speech pathologist. She is the founder of the Vocally app and the founder of the Speech and Voice Care Center. She is a professional speaker and a vocal care coach. Please allow me to welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show, Shulanda Shuli Gibson. <laughs> Shalanda, Shalanda, thank you so much for being a guest on the Keandra Jackson Show. I am so excited to have you today. No, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm ready for this conversation. Absolutely. Like when I think of voice care, anything voice related, okay, you are that girl. You are the person, you are the first person that comes to my mind. I'm like, oh, I have to have her on the show. You've been on my list for a while because y'all know I keep a running list of all the experts that I want on my show. <laughs> and so I am glad that we were able to get you on because this whole episode has been on voice and taking care of your voice and voice care and vocal cords and the things that we don't talk about enough, to be honest with you. So I would love for you to tell us what is your perspective when it comes to individual voices? Like, why does it matter? I, I just want to know, like, what is your your stance on this? I'm glad you asked. Don't you love it when people say that? that? That's the question right there. Your voice is unique. And it's as unique as your, I'm holding up my thumb. It's your you, as unique as your thumbprint, your fingerprints. Nobody has the same fingerprints, so nobody has the same voice print. And you see people who do impersonations and though they can do an impersonation, there's always that one quality that's not quite the same because our vocal cords are our vocal cords. And it's really scientific and it's really having to do, I don't want, I'm about to nerd out on you. So you just let me know if it's just too nerdy and if I need to clarify, but everybody's voice print is their very own. And again, it's scientific and it has to do with the weight of your vocal cords. It has to do with your size. Like there's so many factors that go into it, but just like nobody has your sauce, nobody has your voice. That's really good because I don't think we have enough conversations around this. I know we all know like, oh, your fingerprint, your thumbprint, you know, it's unique, but we don't talk about other aspects of ourselves that are just as unique. So you breaking it down and saying, Heck yeah, your voice, your unique voice is as unique as your own fingerprint. Nobody got it like you. Nobody can say it like you. Nobody can do fill in the blank like you. That's so dope to really think about. Amazing thing. And I go back not to get too deep and wonderful, but I just think about God and his infinite creation and how he just made us all so unique. Why not? And if we're his hands, his feet, and his voice in this earth. You tell your story like you tell your story in your voice, in your pitch, in your tone, with your persona, and just how we are all unique. And I just think that's one of those things that once we lean into it, your storytelling becomes more amazing. How you share and help and support people becomes, that's, that's the key. It, it's really the key to life, to success and all the things. Something that really is important to me. You know, we be having all the God conversations, right? Like my people know that <laughs> it's Team Jesus over here. But I think you made a great point. Like God has made us so unique to the point where it's just like, why would he give you your unique voice and the sound of your voice? So I love that you, you mentioned that, but you also mentioned something that I think a lot of other people will resonate with as well. When we think of voice, sometimes we think of like, someone who just speaks a lot, you're a public speaker, you're a singer, you're you're someone who does a lot of talking, but there's so many other different types of communicators and people that are out there. You might just be giving presentations at your job. So can you share a little bit about that part too? Because I wanna make sure that this resonates with everybody listening. You are what I call a vocal athlete. That's a term in the voice world. If you use your voice to make a living, 
that's you. Like you said, a teacher in the classroom. And I like to use this as an example. If you work a drive through at a fast food restaurant, can you, can I tell you how important it is to be able to communicate your message? And we like to think we have to have a huge stage in your board meeting, in your meeting with your boss, your coworker, it could be a party of one or a crowd of many. Public speaking is just having conversations with anyone in an open forum. And I think that's the part that, like you said, people get that confused. Like, yes, occupational voice users are vocal athletes. If you can't make money, if your voice does not work, it is important. A vocal athlete. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. And I like to classify it too. You have the elite, just like when you have beginning, you know, and when it comes to the sports world, you have beginners in sports, you have different levels, and then you have elite level. And so if you are active and you're using your voice, so for instance, speaking, performing and those things. So I'm throwing it out there, elite, you're elite because you have put the time in, you have put the work in, and that's the difference maker, right? You put the time in, the work in to develop your gift, to develop your craft. And even if you have aspirations to be on that elite level from speaking and doing those things, booking gigs, put in the word. You can grow from novice, not knowing how to control your voice to professional elite level, making the, making the coins because your voice is currency. Can I say that? I, I can't have a conversation without saying that. Yeah, say it again for the people in the back. Your voice is currency. Yes, my <laughs> voice. Look, for the people who say it with us, your voice yeah. is currency. Exactly. Like, I love it. Doesn't that sound good? Money. It can make you money. Tons of money if you know how to work it the right way. Let's be clear. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so this isn't necessarily on my little list of questions that I sent you, but I feel it in my spirit because I know this is me. So it's probably a whole bunch of other people watching as well. What do you say to the people who don't like the sound of their own voice? Because I'm the one that can't stand running the tape back, watching myself doing keynotes. And you know, I got to edit videos like this and hearing my voice multiple times. What do you say for the people who are just like, I don't really like the sound of my own voice. I don't like the sound of your voice. Just know that you're not alone. There are many people, and I don't have the stats. I need to look it up and see if anybody's done a survey on that. Maybe they have, and I just don't know. But there are many people who do not like the sound of their own voice. And it has to do with your, again, going back to science, because I am a voice specialized speech pathologist, and it's about the evidence for me, and I bring that into the real world. So with that said, the way we hear ourselves is through bone conduction. We have the bones of our inner ear and it makes our voice sound richer and you can hear it resonating and through just those cavities and that kind of thing. And the way you hear yourself on a recording and when you play it back, whether it's a video, audio, it's through air conduction, which is how we hear other people and how other people hear us. And so we have how we think we sound to ourselves and then how we sound when it's played back to us in the air and we hear ourselves in that same way. And it's almost disturbing for people, but it can be very off-putting because again, it has to do with your identity. So much of your voice is tied to your identity. And if I, if I think I sound this, I don't know, rich tone and whatever, but then when it comes out in the air, it's more of a higher pitch. It sounds thinner and however people describe it, they don't like it because it's that perception. It's the inside versus the outside thing, but you can learn to love your voice and get used to the sound of it when you play it back. So when you play back, just kind of take it in and adjust to it. The more you hear it, the more you adjust and your perception shifts. Now, if there's something you don't like about it, then there's some, you can change it, which is where services like mine come in. So if you don't like your tone, if you don't like your volume, your pitch, or whatever that quality is about it, use that as feedback. So instead of running from it, lean into it and learn like, hmm, I think I could tweak this little aspect of my voice, but you can take it as a tool to learn and to grow, but just know it's your voice, love it. And it's easier said than done, but yeah, it, it really messes people up and they won't leave voicemails. I've had people, they say they don't leave voicemails. They will not record a voicemail 
so many things. They run away from any type of microphone, video. It is, it's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. I didn't even realize that some people take it to that extreme. Like, I'm not leaving a voicemail. Like, I don't even want you to hear my voice. And it's yeah. interesting that we're having this conversation because literally just this morning, someone responded on my YouTube video, a hater, right? And was just like, your voice is so annoying. I wanted to click off your video as soon as I heard your voice. And I was just like, sir. <laughs> Why didn't you? That would that would be me. Why didn't you? <laughs> Like you're, you're commenting and watching and making me more money. I don't understand why you're doing this, but, but thanks for the comments because it registers. I mean, you, you watched it. Thanks for the watch hours. Absolutely. You know, people are just interesting. So even with everything that you just mentioned and you just said, I feel like there's still a lot of us who do things wrong. <laughs> like, and I'm probably one of the ones too, because I've heard you say on TikTok and some of your other platforms, there are just some things that we should not do. Mm. Some things that we have gotten wrong, some lies, some stigma, some things that we have believed about our voice care that we need to change. So can you tell us maybe a few of those things that we have done? I, I got one that come to my mind, but I'm going to see if you're going to say it. That, okay. uh, that, that really just, we shouldn't be doing it anymore. Please tell us some of those things. Well, one T, I like to mention, here's the T on T. We think that T is our savior when it comes to voice. And when I've seen it happen so many times when there's a speaker or someone posts on their social media, my voice is tripping, I lost my voice, what can I do? And first thing people say, T, this is what I drink. Get a medicine ball, get a this, get a that. When I tell you T is soothing, this is what I'll say, T is soothing and it's comfort and that warm sensation, just, it makes you feel good, right? However, take this with you, put it in your pocket. Tea does not touch your vocal cords. Therefore, what can it do? Honestly, that's, it's just one of those things. It You can have your remedies. There are anti-inflammatory properties, right? There's warming. And so we, we say it's a part of your warming ritual. Water doesn't touch your vocal cords either, but it's about systemic hydration. Now, if you're not careful and you have a caffeine sensitivity, that can flare up your reflux is what that tea can do if it's not the right kind of tea. And it can have you performing injured, speaking injured, and put you in trouble. Because I can just use a prime case example. I just finished working with a client pre-surgery educator she got some type of virus at the beginning of the school year last year she thought she could power through she used her tea she said she drank any kind of tea she could get her hands on yeah in the break room and it still didn't help her by the time she went to the doctor that little thing had turned into a polyp so maybe it started out as just some swelling and so it allows you to play hurt right so if you're thinking of yourself as a vocal athlete so there are just so many things around it that can be harmful that it's best like get your tea relax but also it's you're resting your voice you're soothing you're calming but more importantly you're taking care of yourself and those things can be more helpful than actually drinking the tea but i'm saying drink your tea but just be mindful that it might not be giving you the help that you think you are getting from the tea okay ma'am i love me some tea okay i mean but drink <laughs> it told me the other day she was like how many times a day do you drink tea i'm like i don't know three four. like i just love drinking tea so what does hit the vocal cords because you said water doesn't hit it tea doesn't yeah. hit it is there something else that actually does hit that vocal cord those vocal cords that is helpful that's a yeah. liquid or something that you can do kind of fairly quickly. That's what it is. We like the quick. We like that that quick and dirty. But you're using your voice. And the best thing that you can do to help your voice is most immediately is to rest. So say you've been speaking and you had, for you, you might have had a workshop. You might have been recording all day. You might have seen clients all day coaching. So you're using your voice. And it's like a muscle, just like you could hurt your knee. You're not going to run a marathon and then keep running that marathon all day. But we think our little voice can do that. And our vocal cords are smaller than our other big muscles in our body. And we just work those little things <laughs> like it's nothing. So what touches your vocal cords, steam could work. And so if you want to hydrate and you want to soothe and you need something that's kind of like a quick relief. Yeah. 
nice little steam, three to five minutes or so. And it's just because it's the little vapors, right? It's going to bypass and it's going to settle on your vocal cords and provide that moisture and that soothing effect. And then also a nebulizer, which can be like a cool mist. You use saline solution. I give my clients typically recommendations for what they can use, but that is something because again, I'm trying not to voice nerd out on you, but it's really about I'm just going to say it like the phonation, like the threshold pressure and like how quickly your vocal cords can move into action. So if you're dry, if you've been yelling, if you're doing all these things, your vocal cords can get swollen, your tissues can be dry, but doing those things kind of will help them to ease the pressure. And then they go into motion and it kind of takes, takes all that, all that other stuff away. So I had to reel myself in, but yeah, if you want something to touch your vocal cords, steam or nebulizer, as I reel myself back in. That's doable. That's reasonable. I mean, we got they got handheld steamers. You can turn on the hot shower. There's ways for you to get that. Yes. I yep. am also wondering, before we move on to the next question, what are your thoughts about cough drops, throat lozenges? I've heard you talk about this, and we know we real good in the Black community. Like, girl, go get you a cough drop. <laughs> go ahead and, you know, suck on that for a little while to get your, vote, your voice together. What do you think about mm -hmm. that? My number two. I was thinking you might be thinking that, but I went with the T because that's the one I hear so much. So yes, mint, menthol. Those things can be drying. And I say they can be a, a vocal enemy because again, they feel good. It's soothing. And just think about it. So if your mouth is feeling dry, then you're going to take that. Or if you're trying to suppress a cough, we'll take the cough drop. We're just trying to make our throat feel better. And again, those things aren't touching our vocal cords, but what they could be doing is drying out your tissues, right? So drying out your throat. And then the more you eat, the more you need to eat. So you're taking like all that mint, all that in. But if you don't, I'll say this. Now, if it doesn't bother you, cool, but just know that mint has a drying effect. And it's in a lot of teas. Like we like a mint tea, a peppermint tea and those kind of things. And then can I throw in, be careful with lemon, because if you have reflux, that can exacerbate that reflux. And if you have reflux issues, so some of these things, it just really might be the impact that it has on your system in general. So if you have reflux, that reflux will touch your vocal cords, but in a way that you don't want. And then you can wake up hoarse, your voice can be raspy. It can cause you to have pain. It'll cause you to feel like you have like this lump in your throat and you're clearing your throat and you're coughing, but it could be reflux, like sneaky little reflux that could come from what you're eating. FYI, that was a bonus. <laughs> if y'all are not taking notes, I already told y'all, y'all gonna start writing this stuff down because this is really helpful. L listen, people pay her thousands of dollars to get this information. So don't play with my girl over here. Don't play with don't. Her. You do this thing on TikTok <clears throat> called Twisted Tuesdays. Yes. Every Tuesday she gives some twisted language to help people. <laughs> I guess you could say like a little exercise for your voice. Every single time that I have done it, I do it absolutely wrong. I got to keep trying. I'm like, Surely, I can't do it. But so, I wanted you to kind of like give us maybe one, two, or maybe even three of mm -hmm. some ones that we can practice even right now. I'm putting myself on blast, but give us okay. some right now that we can practice. You will say it, I'll say it, and then the people at home can, can say it too. Okay, let's do a Twisted Tuesday tutorial as I get into my mode. It's Twisted Tuesday. But I'll say first that tongue twisters are, and I feel like I'm saying my script that goes along with it is hilarious. Like I used to do that. But anyway, tongue, twi tongue twisters, as I say, tongue twisters, I said tongue twisters, tongue twisters are a great way to boost your confidence, warm up your voice and help you work on your articulation. And I call it BAP. So breathe, articulate, and you can project. I used to talk about BOP a lot, but I was like, you know what? It's not really bop is a bap when it comes to the tongue twisters so one if you're a speaker clarity is super important right and the tone of your voice so you can take something as simple as a tongue twister and get your best life like live your best life warm up your voice and go out there and act like an athlete before you get on the stage I'm nervous. so with that I'm said nervous. i'm nervous <laughs> 
I'm going to give you one of my favorites because I like the ones that make you cuss, right? Like, because then if you are afraid of that, <laughs> you have to be on your P's and Q's. But I'm going to give you some tips first. So the goal again, breathe. So your voice is supported by your breath. And so think about breathing out your words. That's what I mean by that. And then the articulation aspect, just think about it, saying it intentionally. So if you try to speed through it, they're really kind of impossible to speed through because you're going to hit speed bumps and they're designed to make you think. And then the projection. So think about where the energy of your voice is. So again, when you're conscious of this, then it makes you more successful. So those are some tips, people, when you do your tongue twister. So with that said, repeat after me. I am not the pheasant plucker. I am not the pheasant plucker. <laughs> so do that. So good. So we can start pheasant plucker. So plucker, the P-L, it's a P-H and a P-L. I am not the pheasant plucker. I am not the pheasant plucker. I am the pheasant plucker's mate. I am the pheasant plucker's mate. <laughs> pheasant plucker. Listen, y'all are the... getting this live. This is not pre-recorded. Right? Like, y'all are getting this. This is me messing up for real, y'all. <laughs> I love it. It's a, listen, it happens, but you're practicing. And so I'm not the pheasant plucker. I'm the pheasant plucker's mate. I'm only plucking pheasants. I'm only plucking pheasants. <laughs> Pheasants. Pheasants. Yes. Pheasants. Because the pheasant plucker is late. The pheasant plucker is late. Oh, so again, I am not the pheasant plucker. I am not the pheasant plucker. I'm the pheasant plucker's mate. I'm the pheasant plucker's mate. Yes. I'm only plucking pheasants. I'm only plucking pheasants. Because the pheasant pluckers late because the pheasant pluckers late yeah okay that was better the second time around Whew. yeah because you were familiar and you were pacing and so you notice how i gave it to you you i move my hands and peep that on twisted tuesday you'll see me kind of doing that too like you can pace yourself that's the bop breathe organize and pace so you can also do that so i should call it the bat bop i don't know but anyway but you're also, yeah, articulating and you're, you're pacing and you're projecting. So it can do a lot of things. When let's, let me give you one more. Let me okay, give you one. Okay. One of my other favorites. I slit the sheet. I slit the sheet. Sheet I slit. Sheet I slit. And on the slitted sheet I sit. And on the slitted sheet I sit. Yeah, I, yeah, I, well, let me find out. So that was that one. Let me give you a short one. Give me a short one. One more, one more short one before okay. we move on to a fun so game. Those are my fave. Those are my two favorites. So, so let's do, this is an oldie but goodie. So how about rubber baby buggy bumpers? Rubber baby bugger bumpers. <laughs> Breathe out the words. That means you're pacing yourself. Articulate, so be intentional, and then pace. So, and project. Rubber baby. Rubber baby bugger bumpers. Almost. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. So think about it. Rubber baby, think of that as a unit. And okay. then rubber baby buggy bumpers. So rubber baby buggy bumpers. Okay. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. It's, so the short ones... The, the short, short ones for me. Yeah, it's the short ones for you. However, people still trip over the short ones because they think, oh, it's a short one and it's good. Mm, you still have to do the same thing, but they are easier to memorize. So yeah, put that in your pocket. Use that rubber baby buggy bumpers. And so it's not about always the speed. As they say, you must go slow before you go fast, like in life and progress. But we want to jump out on that thing. Like, dang it, I messed up. Guess what? Because the articulation is key. I love that BAP acronym. I'm here for it. Even though you kind of just played a little game with me, that was helpful. I love <laughs> to end our sessions and our episodes with a game. But first, I need for you to tell the people how they can stay connected with you because I know they're going to be listening. They took notes. They learned all of these tips. They did Twisted Tuesday with us, even though it ain't. Oh, it is, it is Tuesday. Okay. We are recording this on a Twisted right. Tuesday. <laughs> when it dropped, it's Tuesday. So I don't know when they're watching it, if it's on a Tuesday. But yeah. 
let people know how they can stay connected with you. Tell them a little bit about your app and some of the things before we play our game. Yes. Stay connected with me on all the socials, Shalonda, S-H-U-L-U-N-D-A, Gibson. So Shalonda Gibson, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, same name, and my website, shalondagibson.com. Love that. Mm, See, I was about to say, she's modest. She needs to uh, tell us about her app. That app, I'm definitely getting used to it. I'm so excited. And then also, if you want more practice, definitely come see me. But then if you also want to kind of get a sample of some things and get some exercises in your back pocket first, for whatever reason, people feel like they, they need to try it out. Like church, like I need to get right before I can go to church. No, come see me. But also you can get the app vocally, V-O-C-A-L-I-I. Vocally is an app. It's a vocal habit tracker and it's a voice training app. And so we have a library of voice exercises and tongue twisters and other tools to help you elevate your voice. Yes, indeed. And she has so many other products. If you want to work with her one on one, she's available. So make sure you reach out to her at all of the different platforms that she mentioned already. Are you ready to play a game? I'm ready. You listen, it's my turn. <laughs> So we are going to play a game called This or That. And this is the lightning speed round. So that means you got to give me your answers quick. Are you ready? Ooh. Okay, let's go. These answers, I mean, these questions ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Okay? So okay. don't think they about to be all deep. Burgers or hot dogs? Burgers. Brownies or cookies? Cookies. Fancy restaurants or a fast food truck? Fast food truck. Ooh. Zoo or the aquarium? Aquarium. Dinosaurs or aliens? Dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, but yeah, dinosaurs. Yeah. Okay. Reading before you go to bed or listening to music? Music. Okay. Sweet or salty? Combo? No. Sweet. That's my favorite combination. <laughs> Me too. Can I have a little chip with that Rice Krispie treat? <laughs> you have to choose sweet or salty. Sweet. Salt. sweet. Sweet. Okay. Singing or dancing? Dancing. Ooh, that's surprising. Okay. Okay. Talking face to face or texting? Oh, baby. Face to face. <laughs> you better not have said nothing else because I would have called you out. <laughs> and last but not least, number 10, always talking loud or always whispering? Okay. So I'll answer. You're asking me, the voice whisperer, which one? And that's wow. why I put this question, because of that reason. <laughs> I'm trying not to go into an explanation as to why they both are an issue. Can I just use a confidential voice? No, if I had to choose and I think about me, I'm loud, naturally. So, loud. Okay. But they're both can be an issue. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I completely understand. And she is known as the voice whisperer. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shuli, for allowing me to just come into your world a little bit and to kind of pick your brain to get a little bit of the information in regards to voice care. We know that everything that you said on here was so helpful, not just to the people listening, but also to me personally and professionally. So we got to bring you back for a part two soon. And I'll be I back. See you next time. Thank you so much for having me. Is it me or did Shuli gather me just as much as she probably gathered you? I absolutely love how she gave us gem after gem and gave us practical tools that we can start implementing today. As I already mentioned, this isn't just for the public speaker. This isn't just for the singer, but it is for anybody who understands the power of their voice, their unique voice, and how they can use it and maximize that thing to their greatest potential. And yes, y'all got a chance to see me do the tongue twisters and Twisted Tuesday live and in color. That wasn't something that I planned to do, but it was something that I needed to share with you guys because just like you know that I'm a public speaker, that I'm in the media, I don't get it right either all the time. But I am so thankful that there are people in this world like Shuli who can get us all the way together. Nevertheless, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch another episode of The Keandra Jackson Show. Make sure to stick around, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Be blessed.